It would be super cliche to me to start this video by saying, I'm about to do something that I've never done before. Because what I'm about to do in this video is update the firmware on my HD0 video transmitter and unlock the HD0 freestyle video transmitter so that it can get full output power. That's what this is. This is a tutorial about how to do that. But if you're thinking, what do you mean, Bardwell? You've done that a million times. I've seen you. You've released at least two or three videos showing how to do this. Here's how you used to have to do it. The firmware file goes on the SD card. The SD card goes in the goggles. The goggles power up. Then we get this stupid freaking thing. We plug this stupid cable. Ah. Okay. This stupid cable plugs into the firmware update port on the goggles because that makes a lot of sense. Then, whoops, we need this adapter because the plug changed sizes somewhere along the way. And then... Oh yeah, then we've got this tiny stupid cable, and then this stupid thing plugs into the video transmitter, like so, I can't even freaking plug it in, and then you gotta power the goggles up while not yanking the stupid tiny cable out of the video transmitter, look in the goggles, scroll through the menu, firmware update, boom, then your firmware's updated. What could be simpler? <laughs> you know what could be simpler? If there was a freaking USB adapter that just plugs into your computer and you run a program on your computer to update the firmware on your video transmitter. And that, that I have never done before. So I'm going to show you how to do it. And if you've got HD0, like obviously this is a godsend. This is how you're going to do it from now on. But there's a couple little gotchas. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. So step one is that you're going to buy this programming adapter. It is purchasable from here on the HD0 site. I've got a link in the video description below for your convenience. It costs $15 and the time and hassle that you're going to save not having to do all that garbage that I showed you at the beginning of the video is well worth that $15. Okay, $15 plus shipping. Oh. After you've received this wonderful little programming adapter, you're going to download the software. And again, I'll put a link to that in the video description below. That software is going to come down as a zip file and you are going to extract that zip file to a folder. And then you're going to put that folder somewhere on your hard drive. So here's where I have put that folder and here is the contents of that folder. Now there's this handy dandy how to use text file, which you could totally read or you could just keep watching this video and I'll take you through the steps. <laughs> and the first thing you need to do is go into the driver folder and you need to run the install.bat batch file. This is gonna install some drivers on your machine that allow this program to work. By the way, this is a Windows program. If you don't have Windows, you're screwed. You can't do this. Sorry. Like you're used to it by now, right? You Mac users, Linux users, you're definitely used to it. After the driver is installed, we can just double click HD0 VTX programmer.exe and the program will appear. And the first thing you're going to see here is down here in the lower right, these status indicators are grayed out. Um, interesting. There we go. So the first thing you'll see when you plug in the programmer is that prog should turn green. And then when we connect it to the video transmitter, we should see VTX turn green. Now, sadly, we are gonna have to go through this annoying BS with this teeny tiny connector. There's no way around it, but we can just be super careful. And at least without a giant set of goggles hanging off the damn thing, it's gonna be easier to get it lined up, get it the right way up and get it plugged in. Oh, there we go. And in fact, it's kind of weird that when I plug it in, I got the USB disconnected sound, but you can see right here, VTX is green, prog is green. That's what we want to see. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is when you first get this program, the list of VTXs is not going to be complete. For example, when I, it wasn't recording at the time, but the Freestyle V2 was not there. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit the refresh button and just update, and that'll update the list of available firmwares and the list of available video transmitters. Next, we need to choose our video transmitter, and there's a lot of HD0 video transmitters. Do you have the Whoop video transmitter? Do you have the Whoop Lite? Do you have the Race V1, 2, or 3? We can just hit auto detect and... And it won't work. That sucks. Oh, well, I'll just choose the HD0 Freestyle V2, which is the one that I've got. Auto detect, no? Oh, well. And then we'll choose the firmware version, version 150. And 
we hit load firmware online. Got it. And then we're going to hit update. And as far as I understand, you can flash the firmware without plugging a battery in. But to do the unlock procedure, you need the battery plugged in. I'll show you that next. Let's go ahead and update the firmware. And sure enough, if we go into the HD0 menu, we can see down at the bottom of the screen, version 150, the firmware update has taken. But we still need to do the um, unlock. And the exact way to do the unlock procedure is very specific and uh, it's easy to mess up, so follow along. In order to unlock the Freestyle VTX, we need to go to the download page here on the HD0 website uh, and download an unlock file. It's gonna be right here under Utilities, and we're gonna choose unlockfreestyle.zip. It's a little unfortunate that that option isn't, or at least I can't find it, here in the menus of the app. Like, you would think under Choose Version, there would be Unlock, and you could just flash it easily without without having to download the file, but it just doesn't seem to be the case. So here's the contents of the unlock freestyle.zip, and it looks an awful lot like an HD0 firmware, and it kind of is, but it kind of isn't. We're gonna flash it as if it was an HD0 firmware, but it's not gonna update our firmware version, and there's gonna be one extra step that we have to do in order to make this unlock take effect. Here in the programming app, I'm going to choose my HD0 Freestyle V2 VTX, and instead of choosing the online version, I'm gonna hit Load Firmware Local, and then I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna find that HD0 TX.bin, that is the unlock file that I downloaded previously. And then I'm gonna flash that. Now, at this point, your video transmitter is not unlocked. The next thing that you need to do is power it on and wait for it to do something behind the scenes that will unlock itself. So I'm gonna power up the video transmitter and I want you to watch the LEDs. What we should see is that the red LED is on and then the blue LED should blink three times. Did it already blink three times and I just missed it? Oh yeah, it, it happens pretty quick. So the blue LED goes blink, blink, blink three times, and at this point, your video transmitter is unlocked, but it's not working. It doesn't function. It doesn't transmit video. It doesn't do anything. The final step is to reflash the video transmitter with the standard firmware, and then you'll be good to go. And now my video transmitter should be unlocked. I want to show you one of the coolest things that I've seen HD0 do. It's a small thing, but it really impressed me. Check this out. If we take a look at my video transmitter tab here, we can see that I've got the VTX table loaded for the HD0 video transmitter. And do you see down in the bottom, we've got 25 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts, and zero milliwatt pit mode, but we don't have the higher output powers because the video transmitter wasn't unlocked. It didn't support those output powers. But if I power up the video transmitter, now that it's unlocked, and then I leave this tab, and come back. Do you see that the video transmitter has told the flight controller the correct power levels that it supports and it automatically updated? I didn't do that behind the scenes. I didn't go to the presets tab and load some VTX table. It automatically did that. So simple. And yet, <sighs> thanks HD0. It's pretty freaking awesome. Well, the only thing for me to do now is take this quadcopter out and give it a fly and see what kind of uh, range I'm getting from the video transmitter. Uh, but that's a topic for another day. If you're new to the HD0 system and you're interested in learning more about how to get your HD0 video transmitter completely set up and configured, how to get your OSD working and all that other stuff, I've got a chapter in my 2023 beginner build series showing you everything you need to know to get an HD0 video transmitter working with a Betaflight flight controller. The beginner build series goal is to take somebody who's never built a quadcopter before and get and sort of handhold you through the process until your very first flight. But even if you're not building that exact same quadcopter, the tutorials it gives, I think, are still super, super valuable. I'd like to put a card on screen if you wanna go check that out. As well, if you're not familiar with how freaking awesome the HD0 goggles are, I'm gonna put a card on screen to my review of the HD0 goggles. I call them the best FPV goggle for almost everybody, and I kinda mean it. See you there.